Hi, my name is Paul Michael Haynes. I'm the interviewer. The cameraman is John Haynes. We're at Millstone Township, New Jersey on May 31st, 2013. We are joined today by Mr. Paul Kenneth Haynes, my grandpa, who will discuss his experiences during World War II. What were you doing before you joined the war? I was in college studying economics, history, and religion. And uh, I was drafted out of college. Mm -hmm. How long did you serve in the war? Two years. Two, two years. Your rank? My rank was corporal. Mm -hmm. Where you served? Where did I serve? Mm -hmm. I served in uh, Europe. Were you in drafted? Second, in the Second World War. Were you drafted or did you enlist? I was drafted. Uh, the age you were drafted? I was 19 years old. Did you know what you were fighting for? Yes. I knew that Germany was conquering Europe. The Germans were too powerful for the different countries in Europe to protect themselves. And he was winning countries constantly. And we Americans needed help. And we had to support the other countries to beat the Russians, to beat Germans. Where and what was boot camp like? Boot camp was in uh, South Carolina, and the camp was a training to be a soldier. And we had to know our, our guns. As a matter of fact, we had to know them so well that we had to take them apart and put them together blindfolded, because that was very important to us. You want to know what we did, what else we learned there? Sure. Well, for example, we had to know how to read a compass, where to go, because we were in strange land, and a lot of the roads weren't marked that well. And I said, one way we learned, if we didn't have a compass, we could see when the sun shone where the shadows were, then we knew what direction we were walking in. I understand you wrote a book about the war. I wrote a book about the war, that's correct. Mm -hmm. I read your book. Most of uh, my questions ahead will be about your experiences during World War II that you wrote about in your book. Okay. How did you get to Europe? I went to Europe by going from Washington, D.C. up to Massachusetts, and I boarded the the first war, first World War ship, the Aquitania. The Aquitania is an old ship. It took me from Massachusetts to England. It took about a week to get there. And what we had to do was try to get out of the way of the submarines that were trying to shoot at us. But we made, we made it safely to England. Mm -hmm. And from England, you... Then from England, uh, we boarded uh, a cruiser that took us to the coast of France. Uh -huh. To the coast of France. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, what was some of the equipment you carried with you? Uh, the equipment we carried with us was my rifle, a water container, my bullets, uh, my uh, uh, heavy coat and my helmets and because we landed on the coast of France the 1st of January 1945 imagine the 1st of January 1945 after arriving in Europe you went to the Battle of the Bulge after I we got into the coast of France, we went to Moselle. Uh, Moselle was south of where the, the battle was taking place, up in the Ardennes forest of Belgium. And that's what we, we headed for on the back of tanks. We were in the back of tanks going all the way up there. 
We got into Belgium in the middle of the night at 4.30 in the morning. We got off the tanks and moved into the private homes of people. They crawled out of the beds and we crawled in. We kept our boots in all the time. We didn't know when we had to leave because the Battle of Belgium was just ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, what were some of your assignments? My first assignment was to be a scout. Mm -hmm. and that meant that since I had a Browning automatic rifle, I could be a scout up front of everybody else. And when we got closer to the Germans, they'd shoot at me. Then we knew where, it, where they were. And that was my first assignment. <laughs> what happened to the soldiers that couldn't put up with the dangers of war? Well, the soldiers that had mental problems, that couldn't put up with the facilities of war because it was barbaric, a barbaric experience. Mm -hmm. It was very difficult. And we boys that came back from the United States didn't know what we were getting into. It was a new experience for us, but it was very dangerous, of course. Mm -hmm. And so therefore, uh, uh, we were right on, the, right on the front lines. And when we got to the front lines, we were surrounded by the Germans. The, the, the machine guns and the, the, our rifles were pointed in all directions to get out of the hole. Mm -hmm. And that's what we had to do. We had to knock ourselves, gain to get out into the open so we could keep pushing the Germans back into Germany. Mm -hmm. What were some of the injuries and emotions that you and your unit faced? Well, of course, what happened was when we, we since we were in the advance, they were already there before we, mm -hmm. I mean, they had, where we were, they had been already. And now we're pushing them back into Germany. Mm -hmm. So therefore, we're moving up to them, against them. We're pushing them back into Germany. And we had experiences where we would meet them, and now we're in the middle of winter, and there's snow on the ground, and the snow is uh, knee-deep high, and the, the temperatures were very cold. And a lot of our unit, our men, had frostbites. And this was very bad because when the medics would come to doctor them, their, their medicine had frozen and it wasn't any good. And in our march, we would march 20 miles at a time and we had to walk through that snow and we were so hot from walking through the snow, we were sweating and the sweat would drop down on our boat on the rifle and the rifle wouldn't shoot. It was a problem. What was fighting like in the Elbe River for you? In the Elbe River, well, you see, since we were advancing into Germany, we wanted to conquer all the bri bridges that we could because the tanks were behind us and they had, that was heavy equipment to go over the bridges and we had to conquer the bridges first. And that's where the water went underneath, you know? Mm -hmm. So we had to win those bridges to get our supply units to us as we were advancing into Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, what was fighting like in uh, Geldern? What did you say? Geldern. Geldern. Mm -hmm. Geldern was a very difficult town. It was well fortified by the Germans. Mm -hmm. And it's a big town. And we had a little problem there because as we got into the town, they were all set up. And we'd, wipe that, we'd fight down their streets. So this one particular time, the bullets were flying all over the place, and I got to this house, and I want to see what's going on. The, the, the fighting had just stopped momentarily. I got out into the front doorway, and I turned around, went back into the hall, and an artillery shell from a cannon hit right in the front of that doorway. It splashed all over that do that hall, but I. I was out of the hall into the living room. I would have been totally killed if, if I would have been there. Going into post-World War II. What did you say? Going into post-World War II. What was it like being assigned to the military government? 
because when they found out that I could speak German, instead of being a scout, they had me uh, questioning the prisoners of war. Mm -hmm. What our officers had to know is what lies up ahead so they could prepare us to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Because at 4.30 in the morning is when we were aroused to get up and move forward into into the German into the Germans and we kept going forward until uh, we could accomplish whatever we were trying to overcome a town or a bridge or mm -hmm. something like that you were in charge of many towns oh so. yes then uh, since I could speak German after the war was over and we're not basically fighting, mm -hmm. but we had to take over military government. The United States Army, like it was the, uh, the Persian Gulf of the First World War, uh, that was taken over Europe. But since I could speak Germany, my only responsibility was Germany. So I dealt more with the German people than I did with the American soldiers. Mm -hmm. So my job was to set up a government that I had a court and I was the judge, I was also the jury because the Germans were very or, uh, 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 very uh, instrumental people. They, they took an order. If you had a stamp and you put the stamp on the paper, that was the authority they needed. Mm -hmm. Put your stamp. I had a stamp made. Disciplined, yeah. It, well, yeah. But they were very regimental, and they went right by that stand. And since I was the one that made the rules and regulations for the various towns, I had to come up with rules and regulations that they had to be home at night, not out in the roads, and that sort of thing. And when they needed, uh, when they needed um, fuel to plow their fields, this is May now, in May, and uh, they were plowing their fields. I had the authority to give the towns the fuel for their farmers. Where were these towns? I just 13. Where were these towns? Where were they? Yeah. They were close to the province of Hanover. Okay. That's northern Germany. Mm -hmm. And uh, I uh, dealt with those 13 German towns, primarily south of Hanover. Hanover was the capital. Mm -hmm. But I would go to the capital and I'd speak to the Uber Burgermeister, that's the high Burgermeister, mm -hmm. the high governor, he was like a governor. And I've had meetings with him to get things done for that province. Mm -hmm. uh, what were uh, the civilians like that you encountered? I had to record all the people under my jurisdiction as to what kind of people they were, what kind of food they needed, because they were they didn't have much food. Yeah. How, how many chickens, how many cows, how many bulls, and every, all, any kind of eating material, I had to record that what was in those towns. So we knew what kind of food we had to come up with to support them so they wouldn't die. Mm -hmm. And the other thing was, I was in charge of the displaced persons that were brought in from other countries to do the dirty, the farmer's work, the, the, the uh, to make the, the military equipment and all that that they had to make in those towns and I had to see how many people they were doing that and what kind of circumstances they were in, how much water they had, how much electricity they had, what kind of schools and I had to make reports as to their condition and I had to report that back to main headquarters and they'd solve it.